Hello, eighth graders. Really quickly, I'm going to walk you through our first chapter of notes. This is a quick tutorial on how we want you to fill out your notes through our Seed Folks unit. And the only two things you're going to need are a copy of your notes and a copy of the book because a lot of your notes are going to be pulled from details from the text. So today you are reading chapters one and two. We are reading about Kim and Anna. I'm going to help you guys fill out your notes for our first chapter. So you guys should already have your notes made, but if not, this is what you are going to create. You can go back to last week's video on how to create these notes page by page. You guys can find all of that basic information from last week's notes. From here, we're going to scoot our way down. We're going to answer these three questions together today. So question one, what does this character believe about life? Based on the text and what we've read about Kim and based on our own life experience, we are going to fill in a couple of ideas. So one thing that stood out to me as I was reading this um, is that there were candles and incense happening in the book. They were lit the day before to mark his death anniversary. So I think that's really interesting. That is not something my family does. So in my life, in my background, I do not mark the death anniversary of my relatives or ancestors. So I thought that was interesting that this character Kim, that's part of her life experience based on the text. Um, they offered him rice and meat. They had an altar set up. And then later on in the text, um, whenever we flip the page, we see in this part of the text, a lot of language that was very present tense in terms of her father. So we know her father is no longer alive. He has passed away, but she is talking as if he is still watching her, um, that he would still see her that she would show him that she could raise plants. I would show him. That's kind of a repetitive theme in this last part of her chapter. So all of those details, the candle and the incense, the altar that they've made for their father, marking his death, his death anniversary, and then this idea that he can still see her and that she's showing him that she can raise plants and things like that. All of that to me, based on my background knowledge about life and what other people believe in, I can infer that she believes that her father is alive in an afterlife. And I can infer that she believes she can live her life to make him proud. Because that's the whole reason this community garden is going to start. It's going to start with these little lima beans. She is planting these because she wants her father to see her patience and her hard work. She wants to show him that she can raise plants and that she wants to show him that she was his daughter. So this whole thing starts because she, Kim, main, or the first character we come into contact with, Kim wants to show her father um, that he can be proud of her. So I can infer based on the text and based on my own life experiences, that she believes that her father is alive in an afterlife. She doesn't specify what kind of afterlife. She doesn't say the word heaven or anything like that, but she implies that she believes he can still see her and he can still be proud of her. And she believes that she can live her life and make decisions that will make him proud, even in his death. So question number two, what are the character's concerns right now? So again, if we're going back to the text, we can skim and scan because we should have already read this if we're filling out these notes. So she mentions her tears. She mentions that um, her mother was crying the night that they were marking his death anniversary and her oldest sister had joined in, but her own tears had then come as well, but for a different reason. So there is some turmoil here. There's some sadness, but not for the same reason that her mother and her sister are sad. 
So from down here, we can see that she kind of snuck out of her house. Um, we kind of go with her to this empty lot. And she kind of walks us through that experience. As she's digging, she says she, th she thought about how her mother and sisters remembered her father. They knew his face from every angle, held in their fingers and feel of his hands. Well, they held in their fingers the feel of his hands. She had no such memories to cry over. She didn't have those memories of her father. She had not even been born yet when her father passed away. And he had no memories of her. So in the second question, based on my experience of life and based on the details from the text, I can infer she's concerned that she didn't or she did not get to know her father. I can also infer that she worries because, I'm going to abbreviate that, because he didn't know her. So those are her two concerns right now based on my inferences from the chapter. We can see we're at underlying different pieces of evidence for that. And just to make sure I remember where this was, I'm going to write down pages one through four because we kind of see those patterns throughout. I'm going to add that over here too, just to the bottom of this. Oh, sorry, that was a little messy. Pages one through four so that whenever we do our writing assignment, when I come back to my notes and I have evidence to pull from the text, I automatically know where to go to find that direct quote to support my analysis. And then the last question today, how does this character feel about the neighborhood garden? So this is super interesting because we're seeing this at the beginning of the story. At this part of the story, this garden is only a row of lima beans. And it's only Kim who is planted in the garden so far when we've read chapter one. So it's really interesting to think of it as a community garden because we don't really have the community involved yet, but we see the beginnings of this garden. So let's go through really quickly and we'll find some evidence to help our inferences of this community garden. So she found the lot, she picked her way through. Um, so first of all, she was dedicated to this. The ground was hard. It was cold outside. She was out there in the freezing cold planting these, um, these lima beans. So she was at least dedicated to it. I can infer that. Um, and I, I, I think we can use the same evidence from this other paragraph. She wanted to plant these lima beans because she wanted her father to see her patience. She wanted him to see her hard work. She wanted to show him that she could raise plants like he did. And so that is a huge reason why this garden started in the first place. And then also she has some background knowledge because her class at school had actually sprouted lima beans in paper cups the year before. So she has the experience and knows kind of the basics of what to do. So those details from the text paired with my own background knowledge, I can infer that she's doing this for her own reasons because she's the one who starts this whole thing. So she did not start this garden with the intention of starting a community garden. She's doing this for herself and for her relationship with her father um, and to make herself feel better about that, that loss that she suffered. She started it She started to make her dad proud. So those are our inferences for today. Again, I'm just going to put page, actually, I think I'm on this one, I'm just going to put page four because that's really the only page I used for this particular inference. So I want us to take a, take a second 
and look at what how I wrote this. I am not requiring you to write in full sentences, but if you notice in every single box, there are two bullet points. There are two inferences I made from the text for each question. My page looks like this, your page should look like this. Two bullet points, two inferences for every single question, not just for this chapter, but for every chapter we read throughout this experience. Anything less in your effort points will go way down, okay? So please be aware, I want two inferences per box. I want you to also include the page numbers. That's super important. One, it shows that you're trying your best to keep track and close read this book, but also it shows me that you're getting these details from the text. You're actually reading the text and you know what you're talking about. That's going to help you so much. I can't even put it into words how much this is going to help you when we get to the end of this unit and you are required to write a whole paragraph analyzing this book. Um, and to be able to have discussions about it, you need to be able to know where you're getting this information so that when I say you need to have a direct quote to support your analysis, you already have that quote ready. And you're not totally sure yet, I'm not totally sure yet what chapter I'm going to make you pull from. So we need to gather all the evidence from all the places and have this ready for when we do start writing. So now we're going to move down to themes and garden information. For themes, we're going to get more instruction on how to write themes next week. That'll be one of your mini lesson videos that you have to watch. But for now, just know that I'm looking for abstract noun plus details from the text. So you could use our abstract noun that we used last week in our Google Meets. We talked about community. And then you would partner that with details from the text. You could talk about um, family because in this particular chapter, we hear a lot about family. You could talk about loss or grief plus details from the text. But I'm mainly, this week, I want you to focus on the abstract nouns. We will get to how to write a theme next week. And then the last thing is garden information. So we're going to try and keep track of what's going on in this garden. So this, at this point in the story, we see, hold on, let's find our details from the text. If we go to page three, we can see that no one, oh, hold on, maybe it's page two, sorry. Um, she walked on the sidewalk. It was wintry still, but I think she mentions earlier that it's technically spring. I think we kind of understand that a little bit, how sometimes it's technically spring, but it feels really cold outside still. Um, yep, she says here in Cleveland, people call it spring. Okay, so then on page four, um, there was an old couch in the middle of the lot. You see that detail? Um, she was going through uh, their tires, trash. So if you guys remember, I guess it was the beginning of last week, we learned what those vacant lots could possibly look like. And we saw a few examples of what they could look like with all the trees um, like pushed over, all the bags of trash, the old furniture that's just laying everywhere. Picture those in your head. This is the kind of lot she's walking into. Um, so she saw some rats, that would be kind of crazy. So this is not looking like a really pretty situation to start off. It does not start in like a normal garden that you would see in your backyard or in your grandparents' house. Um, there's even a rusty refrigerator. So lots of trash and nasty things out here. Oh gosh, making sure I'm smelling refrigerator right. And I didn't, sorry, my handwriting is getting really rough at the end of this. I'm sorry guys. Um, and then at the end, we learn she is planting lima beans. She's planting lima beans and she brought her own water. 
There is not like a faucet she could use yet. Okay, so here is our notes page filled out completely. Your notes page should look identical to this, especially for chapter one. So I'm literally walking you through how to do it. So for chapter one, I should see two inferences per question. You are more than welcome to follow along and do this with me and write down what I write down just to get practice. For themes, we're gonna start with abstract nouns. So you just write a few that you can think of from this particular chapter. And then for garden information, you're going back to the text and you're finding the information about the garden based on what the chapter reveals. And then when you finish with chapter one, you're gonna do the same thing for chapter two. So you're reading both about Kim and then you are going to read about Anna and fill in Anna's note page on your own. And then next week we will get into other chapters and you will continue to do this note page for every single character in every single part of the story. So if you have any questions or any concerns about these notes, please do not hesitate to reach out to me and ask for help. I am here for you guys. Um, from here, you guys can continue reading, finish reading, start reading wherever you're at. And you guys will make sure you take a picture of your notes. I want a picture of both pages. And you're going to attach that picture to the Google Classroom assignment and submit it. If I do not get that, it will go in as a missing. And if it is not filled out to satisfaction, it will drop in grade. Okay, so this is what your overall paper should look like.